He was quiet and self-assured. The wine sat on the table in that joyous light associated with angry historical angels, no longer recognizable. He had been a research librarian at UC Berkeley in the time of such luminaries as Baudelaire and Wordsworth. He was eclectic, capable of stripping the bark from Homer, fully aware of language and the lack of power to comprehend the unrecognizable power of love because he also knew what we call love is just another name in the unlimited order of nothing. He poured us each a glass. The women watched. The ferry, a bell rang for the man being brought home from the medical center lying in a coffin. They had put straw in the cavities where his eyes had once been. There were whispers of love and lust in the olive grove. We were allowed to walk there when the pharmacist opened the gate to what he called paradise. It's just a hidden grove, almost timeless. The bleached green leaves were brittle to the touch. I was charmed by their fragility. I wanted to say how much I love to think of trees. I thought of what extraordinary love, for example, Monet had given to the poplars, but was it they who gave Monet? And everything talks to everything else. Even the silent man talks to Socrates. Even the painter forgives his mountain. I guess we left the grove thinking there were seabirds in the gate and the donkeys were braying as the rich German publisher led his wives and ex-wives along with servants and retainers to the mansion high above the house where the famous artists spent a few weeks each year. I would like to examine the eyes again, the pronouns of Walt Whitman. How do you run as fast as the ridiculous things people say about love? We have changed nothing, not a damn thing, not one centimeter, not a dime's worth as he walked the gate to the grove. We said we need time to let go of love. We need a treatise on the improbability of knowing why this feeling is here, this luminous loss, these empty eyes, these rocks we place where the hunger had been this gold mask we hammer into shape. The tree at the end of land, swell of the nearby waves beyond the harbor, the loss of the woman who had stood alone, the yachts from distant islands, the elders on their blue benches, the German magazine publisher comes to the port for scotch and soda at the red benches. There is a bodyguard and a secretary. Beyond love, we claim emptiness as a monument. A vision is given to the librarian. A gift in words we cannot wholly decipher. The hawks fly over the coast. A sense of being here in time, of knowing it is impossible to trim love to a few words or to a tree or to a wave.